The best image stabilization is you having good technique. Hold still, hold steady, make sure you have the right shutter speed. So you get your new fancy schmancy camera, you start taking a bunch of pictures, click, 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 click. You go to the computer, you look at the pictures and they're like, they're not sharp. Well, I'll help you with some of that. Hi, my name's Paul Krause. I'm a professional photographer based here in Kyoto, Japan. What I'm gonna talk about today is having good shooting technique. Good technique is important. A pro has the fundamentals down really well. So let's get to it. One of the things I do here in Kyoto, Japan, which is an international tourist destination, is lead photo workshops and lead photo tours. One of the things I see most often with clients that are having difficulty with having not sharp pictures is that they have very poor camera shooting technique. Got to hold your camera steady. So you need to have something to brace the camera on. With this camera, there's basically three different ways to shoot the camera. You can shoot with the camera to your eye. You can shoot looking at the back screen. Or you can use, like I love the flippy screen, and I shoot looking down at the flippy screen like this. I shoot with my using the thumb is to fire the camera. So let's go through the first one and show you what's the best technique. So we'll, through the eye. So looking through the viewfinder, which is the common way, especially if you're shooting film, that's how everybody shot pictures. But I, I brace the camera on my hands. And if you see how my arm is, it's right down here, all right? So if you were shooting a rifle, it'd be the same thing. You'd have your arm like this against your body and you put the rifle right here and you'd hold back to pull the trigger, okay? exhale to pull the trigger you don't jerk it back because then the bullet goes that way and you miss the target same thing with the camera you gotta you gotta brace the camera up like this and when you're firing the picture you squeeze the shutter okay for focus i'm going to focus on this half press the shutter down recompose and press the camera and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the picture because it's really important look at your pictures after you take them it's a digital camera it's one of the best things about digital cameras in film days that would have killed to be able to look at the picture right away so you hit play button and then i press this this dial right here that dial press that in and it brings it to 100 percent and then i look at the focus point which was myself in the frame and it's in focus by the way with this camera i always wrap the strap around the wrist so if i drop it it doesn't hit the ground or fall in the lake or the river or hit somebody on the head if i'm on the top of a building now notice this eye is open okay now you might want to go like this and it's that's understandable i learned working as a newspaper photographer to keep both eyes open one of the reasons is situational awareness i don't want to get you know run over by a linebacker at an american football game or knocked over by firefighters or there's some big dog i want to see what's going on okay that's one thing the other reason is you're relaxed it may take a little bit of a practice but you'll, you'll your face will be relaxed you'll be more relaxed when you take the picture the other thing i see people do a lot is they take a picture they go like this they press down on the camera which moves the camera which is going to give you blurry pictures another thing i also see a lot was people moving before they finish taking the picture they're trying to take the next picture it's like no take the picture now give yourself a little bit of pause after you take the picture all right and then i want to like no 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 take the picture so you fire hold it down pause afterward just a moment all right now if i have a bigger camera like this is my x100t with a 55 to 200 same thing so look at how, look at i'm doing this if i'm zooming a lot i could do this all right but what i see a lot of people do is this there's nothing supporting it and then their pictures are blurry you gotta turn your hand around like this hold it against your body exhale I'm actually lightly holding the camera and most of the weight is on this hand. This is, this is controlling the buttons. If I'm shooting the camera vertically, I hold it like this. Also, I will hold it like this vertically. I have my finger. And as I said earlier, when I'm holding it, I'll cradle it. I'll have to get a B-roll shot of this cradling the camera. Other times, if you want to lean up against something, lean up against a wall, put your arms on a railing or something. Anything you can brace your camera against is an also another thing. Pretty much every camera I have, I have an accessory grip on it. I'm a pretty big guy and I got pretty big hands. If I don't have a grip on the camera, I don't really have anything to hold on to. It might be a problem for you too. So I'm going to take this grip off this camera it's not easy for me to hold if it, this is just jjc grip you can see that dun, 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 dun. i just got this on amazon it's fine 
Ah, it's a strap. Put the strap around your neck. Sometimes I'll use a battery grip like this. Not always, but if I'm shooting certain kind of events where I have on-camera flash and a bigger lens, it gets heavy and the grip helps me hold onto it. The weight here in the, the heel of my hand. And so it's that's a little bit easier to use. I try not to use the battery grip, but it might be good for some people in certain circumstances that will help with the stability of the camera. But what about image stabilization? Well, for example, this camera doesn't have image stabilization. I think you you should practice your technique so that you are not needing image stabilization and that you use image stabilization in the correct circumstances, that it's not a crutch for your poor technique because your poor technique will show up somewhere. Now remember with the digital cameras nowadays, they have super high resolution. The higher the resolution, the more the problems with the poorer quality of a lens or your technique is revealed. It's easier to see your mistakes. Optical image stabilization can be great. You know, it depends upon your shutter speed. If your shutter speed is too low and there's people moving, they're still gonna be out of focus. Also, I've had problems with image stabilization in the past. This is my 18 to 55 millimeter Fujifilm lens. It's a great lens, actually. It's a kit lens, but it's quite sharp. But take a look, what I have a sticker on there, it says, no IS. Why? Because sometimes the pictures out of this lens were not sharp and I couldn't figure out what it was. After doing some testing and so forth, I figured out it was the image stabilization. So if I turn off the image stabilization and keep an eye on my shutter speeds, it's a perfectly sharp lens, okay? There are certain times I might turn it back on, but for the most part, I just turn it off. So I think you should practice having good shot technique and then turn on the image stabilization at the right time. There's an old joke. A man walks up to another man. He's in New York City. He goes, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? The other guy goes, practice, practice, practice. Well, the same here. So your homework today, kids. Yes, you have homework. I want you to go out. I want you to go around and take pictures of very mundane things around your house, outside or wherever, you know, take a picture of, I don't know, the door knob. But practice how you're holding the camera and then look at the pictures to see if they're sharp. And if they're not sharp, keep doing it again. Practice, practice, practice. Now, there might be a few other reasons why your pictures aren't sharp. One is that you're not using the correct shutter speed. A really quick thing you can do is to turn on the auto ISO setting. So what you do is you'll go into the menu dun, 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 and you will go to the camera icon and you're going to go to page two ISO auto settings. You can pick one auto one, two or three. I pick auto three for my custom settings and I want you to change the default sensitivity to 160 ISO. Your maximum sensitivity to 6400 ISO for this is the later version of the Fuji films. I think if, if you have an older one like an X-T1 or an X-100T, those old series ones, 3200 is high as I would go with that camera. And I would put your minimum shutter speed 125th of a second. Your can camera is now taking over the ISO. And these cameras nowadays are so amazing. The f I don't really worry about the grain in the cameras. Okay, some people I see online are a little bit over, you know, oh my gosh, I see a little bit of grain and your pictures are going on Instagram. So really, is it that important? Compared to film, I mean, film days, it was a big difference. The difference between 100 speed and 400 speed Fujichrome slide film was a big difference. And then 1600 slide film was like buckshot. It's more important that you have sharp images because you have the correct shutter speed than having the noise in the camera. One 125th of a second should be good for almost all circumstances, especially with this lens. Now, if you're using longer lenses, you might wanna have higher shutter speeds. I'm gonna talk about that in a different video because I don't want this video to be too long. Set that auto ISO up. Your ceiling is 6400 ISO. If you wanna bring it down lower, you can, but having that min minimum shutter speed of 125th of a second is great. And then what you can do is you can override that. If you wanna set your shutter speed to something else, go right ahead. That's the whole thing about automation is knowing when to go into manual few other things why your pictures might not be so sharp. Clean your lens. Take a look at your lens every time you go out. Is there crud on it? If there is, clean it off. Well, more importantly, and this is another different video, is a lot of times I'll see people with a really, really great high resolution camera and this like super cheap lens. I see this so many times. I bet work with clients to figure out what is the problem and it comes down to your lens is not good. Sometimes people put all their money into the camera and not into the lens. Usually the lens is the most important part. You date your cameras, but you marry 
narrow your lenses. It's a bigger subject than I want to do right at the moment. So keep that in mind. But usually the things that most people have problems is they're, they don't have good technique. Go out and practice your technique. Hold still, hold steady. Make sure you have the right, the shutter speed, at least at one one twenty fifth of a second. All right. As you get better, you might be able to lower that, but you'll know this kind of camera, the one thirtieth of a second is the lowest I can handhold. I hope that was helpful for you. So if you have any questions or comments, video suggestions, put them in the comments below and please don't forget to click like or subscribe so you can get my content when it comes out. <laughs> All right, see you around. Bye. Phasers on love, Mr. Sulu.